Hello my YouTube friends. The most popular video that I have on this channel shows you how to add guests to your live stream in OBS. But that video is a bit old and outdated, so it's time for an update. Today I'm going to show you two ways to add guests to your OBS live streams, and both have advantages and disadvantages. So let me show you how to do this. Let's get to it. <laughs> If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. The first way I want to show you is a bit more difficult, but it gives you the most control of your layout and your audio settings. To do this, we're going to need to install an OBS plugin called NDI. The links to the plugin are in the description. And we start here on the OBS NDI plugin page. On this page, you want to scroll down and find the Windows installer. You can choose either the installer or the zip file. It really makes no difference. I just download the installer and once it's on my computer I just browse to the location of that installer and I'm gonna double click it and run it. Now I'm gonna have all kind of weird glitches and errors when I'm doing this because it's already on my machine and I'm using OBS to actually record the screen. So it's running and on my machine already so I'm gonna be skipping a lot of this but it's gonna go smoothly for you if you don't have it on there or if you're not running OBS and you shouldn't have any problems you just agree to it install it to the D default location and all that kind of stuff and you'll be all set. Once it's finished, if you did not have it on your machine before, you should definitely click restart your machine. Next, we're going to use Skype with OBS to add our guests. For this, you can't use the version of Skype that already came on your Windows machine. You have to go and remove it and go to the Skype page and download and install Skype for desktop version and install that on your machine. Be sure to do that first. Okay, so here we are in Skype and the first thing I want to do is go ahead and click start call in the top right. Next, I can take that join Skype and I can copy that link out and share it with anyone that I want to be adding to my live stream as a guest. And once I have all that set up, I can go ahead and click start call. And here we are. Now, one thing you want to do is make sure in the top left hand corner where it says stop NDI and you have that little red dot. If you are not broadcasting Skype in NDI, that is a problem. So you want to go into your Skype settings and make sure that you have NDI turned on. If you don't see that red dot in the top left hand corner that means Skype NDI is not on and it has to be in order to do this. Now we can see guests coming into our stream and the first one is my friend Jelly Duck and the second one is Michael T. Panetta pops into my stream here and the third one is the Fantastic Joe. So now I have three people in Skype. We are ready to go. So I flip back over into OBS so you can see in this scene I already have my camera loaded and my microphone. We're ready to go. So all I need to do is add my guests. So I click the plus under sources and I'm going to go to to NDI source and I'm gonna add the name here we're gonna add Joe first and then I just go ahead with the source name click the drop down and select the source and there it is all I have to do is move this into the proper location make sure it's the right size and then put it down lower in the sources window so it is behind my overlay and I'm gonna size this up and there we go and then I'm going to go ahead and add text in here so that we add Joe's name and click OK and all I have to do is I can select whatever font I want to use click OK add the text in here and now I just have to add the outline there so it looks like my regular text I can resize it and stick it in this overlay right here and there we go now we're all set up with Joe I'm gonna click the plus add an NDI source and next I'm going to add jelly duck and click OK then in the source name I'm gonna drop this down select jelly ducks NDI source click OK and I'm going to bring this down into my overlay resize it now I'm going to add some text and click OK there. And it's the same process for adding each one of the texts. I select the font, type in the name of the person in the text, scroll down and go ahead and add my outline and click OK and resize it and stick it where I want in my overlay. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my last source, which is Michael. Click OK. And then I just have to search for Michael's window. And there it is. And there we go. I'm going to put it where it's supposed to go and resize it up. And then I just need to move these windows below the overlay. I'm going to add text. And adding text, of course, is the exact same process. 
gonna make sure we put the outline on there resize it and drop it down here and i notice jelly's window is not located properly so i need to go ahead and move it down below the overlay there we go and now i just need to resize things make sure they look okay and you can see that the audio mixer has everyone talking we're getting audio from each of our guests which is always good and i just need to adjust the location of these two pieces of text so they're above the actual camera position and the overlay so we can see them and properly resize each window and there you go now you are ready to go live and broadcast with your guests it's really that easy and of course this by easy means really this is not easy the best part about using skype ndi is the fact that you have much more control over the audio output but other than that it's much more difficult than the process that i'm going to show you now so let's get into how to do it the easy way Using Skype to add your guests is a little bit of a process, but the payoff is that you can use any layout you want and you have much more control over your audio. The second way I'm going to show you for adding guests in OBS is much easier, but you also have less control over your layout and your audio settings. Now I'm going to show you this in Restream Studio, but you could do this in Streamlabs Melon or StreamYard and the process is exactly the same. The links for all these apps are in the description so you should definitely check them out. Now let me show you how to do it. Here in OBS, the first thing we want to do is create a new scene. This is gonna be our basic scene. It would have our overlay and any widgets we have and all that kind of stuff in it. But I'm just gonna set it up really quick with a simple camera. Now you have to keep in mind that you can't use the same camera that you're going to use in OBS in Restream. Although there is a way around this, but generally speaking, you're going to wanna to have a second camera. So I'm going to use a really old generic webcam and it'll do the trick to at least show you how this is done. So once I have my scene created, I'm going to click sources and go to video capture device. I'm going to call this video capture device webcam and I'm just going to set it up. We're going to select it and I'm going to change it to custom and select my resolution and I'm going to scroll down there and I want to select the best microphone I have and that happens to be the one that is on my DSLR. So we're going to use that one click OK. Now obviously the framing is totally different because it's a webcam and it's not my DSLR. I can't zoom it or anything. So what I'm going to have to do is crop it. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag these edges and you can see they turn green. They let you know that this is a crop. Then I'm going to right click on it, go to transform and I'm going to select fit to screen and this makes sure that my image fits in the screen. Now if I was actually going to go live with this camera I would adjust the colors and all that stuff but you do want to have a separate scene that's kind of up that you can see on the screen while you're setting up your guests. I think that's usually a good idea. So this would be the scene I would use. Now I would probably have an overlay with widgets and all kind of stuff and my image in the camera would be a heck of a lot smaller so it probably wouldn't be very noticeable how actually bad it is. But again and most people probably have much better webcams than this piece of junk too. So there's that. I'm just using this as an example and you probably should have a second camera to do this because you're gonna wanna change scenes, but it's not absolutely necessary. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another scene that is going to house our guests. So I'm going to click the plus under scenes. I'm gonna call this one Restream Studio and I'm gonna click OK. And for this scene, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna add some audio, my audio in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this one my audio, click OK. And I'm going to select my DSLR microphone and I'm gonna click OK. Next, I wanna add my guest audio. This is audio that's gonna be captured from Restream IO and sent to the output for the live stream. In order to do this, I'm going to click the plus in sources again, and I'm going to go to audio output capture. I'm gonna call this one Restream Audio, click OK. And I'm gonna drop this down and I'm going to select headphones. Why am I selecting headphones? I'm selecting headphones because this is where the audio for my guest is going to play through. So we're going to grab that audio and send it out through the live stream. The beauty of doing it this way is that I'll also be able to be wearing my headphones so I'll be able to hear and interact with my guests. So I just click OK. Now that we have our audio set up, we need to set up Restream so it's ready to stream. So I'm gonna open my web browser and I'm gonna go to Restream. And once I'm in there, I'm going to click webcam in the top right 
enter live studio and then it's going to ask for our camera i'm going to go to settings because i want to tell it what camera i want to use i'm going to select the audio from my dslr and then i'm going to select my cam link which is my dslr and you can see my audio works and my picture looks pretty good so we're in good shape here now i'm going to go back into obs and i'm going to add this screen so i click the plus under sources and i'm going to go to window capture i'm going to type in restream guests and click OK. And now all I have to do is select the window. If it's not the first one, I just have to find the window and select it. Now, word of note here, if you're using one monitor and you minimize other windows before you open up your OBS, you're not going to be able to see it. This window does have to be up behind the OBS in order to be able to see it. So just keep that in mind. That's also the reason why you're going to see the occasional strange mouse ghosting thing going on where there's two mouses on the screen. Well, that's because it's capturing that window which is behind the OBS window so just in case you were ever wondering why that happens that's why it happens so now that we've captured that screen all I have to do is crop it so again I hold the alt key and I drag the edges and we're just going to crop this preview window and we already know that it's going to be the right dimensions for what we're looking for so once we crop it up all we have to do is go to right click transform and then fit to screen and there we go now we have the exact same window showing up in OBS that we have for our broadcast in Restream. You can see there's no audio activity and that's because it's not going to broadcast my microphone. That's why I added my own microphone. We're only gonna get audio activity when we add a guest. So let me show you how to do that. I flip back over into Restream and I'm going to click this little guest button right here. And here you can see you can add up to 10 guests on your stream. It's really awesome. I'm just gonna click this little double square button to the right. That copies the link to my clipboard. And now I can share this link to anyone I want. And once you have your guests, all you have to do is click this little slider in their window to add them to the stream. Very, very easy. And at the top in the right, you can see these two boxes. These change the layout that your guests are situated in. So Right now it's three of us and we're listed kind of in portrait. But if I click this layout button, it'll show us all in landscape and fill out the screen a little better. Now if I flip over to OBS, you're going to exactly see this preview screen right here. This is what would be broadcasted live to whoever is watching you. You can also see that the restream audio is working just fine and I can adjust it with the slider if I need to. Now we're gonna go back into restream and I have another guest, I'm going to add them. You can see restream automatically changes the layout in order to handle another person. You don't have to do anything. You can go over into Restream, add a guest, and the layout just takes care of itself. It's really, really awesome. I can go up here to the top right, change the layout button again, and you see it just eliminates the ability to see that background. Very, very nice. And when I flip over to OBS, you're going to be able to see that that is exactly what they are going to see as well. Really nice. You can also see that Restream's audio is picking up all of our guests. It's fantastic. Fantastic. You can definitely see how easy it is to add guests using web applications like Restream Studio, Melon, or StreamYard. Which method do you use for your live streams? Or is there one I didn't talk about here? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn how to create your own OBS overlays for your live streams, you should definitely check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.